What should investors be doing and gleaning from it all? Let's get right to the floor show. Joining me now, Blue Rock Capital Market CEO Jeff Schwaber and Carnivore Trading CEO Dutch Masters. Jeff, I don't know. What, what should people take from this? Yeah, well, you know, I agree with you, Liz. I, I, I don't think that we're in for another Black Monday. But, you know, in a normalized macroeconomic environment, you might have one or two events or circumstances which might present a 0.5 to plus one standard deviation to the negative. And, you know, we have a five layer cake of impending pain. And, and, and frankly, we had visibility into it uh, between a, a high state of whatever comes after superinflation, uberinflation, uh, disrupted supply chain, soaring commodity prices, uh, no flight to safety with the Fed so hawkish doing these outsized um, hikes, the Russia-Ukraine conflict. I mean, what else can we toss in there? Um, you know, three times in the last 20 years, we have seen drawdowns to the major equity indices on average of about 50%. Saw it during the dot-com implosion. We sure. saw it during the, the uh, uh, and the terrorist attacks to add, a, add, add more pain to that. Well, can, can I just jump the, in there, Jeff? I mean, for yeah. the equities that were the rock stars of the past seven years, whether they were the Fangs plus Microsoft, I mean, that, that is not even up for discussion. They have been unbelievably strong over these seven years. They've already right. come down about 41% year to date. So isn't right. that enough? You would think, I mean, um, what Netflix went from 700 to, I think, 158. Now it's rocketing uh, back. And I think you'll see that. But, um, you know, if, if you look at P.E. to growth ratios and the classic, I think we hit about 22 to 24 times earnings on the uh, multiple uh, P.E.s on the S&P 500 when the trailing 20 years was about 17.8. So we had a little bit of a, uh, a peekaboo into that. But um you know, with with the Fed so hawkish um, until such time as we have a likely capitulation event, I think we're uh, we're going to be in this trading range between twenty nine and thirty one thousand on the Dow. Let me bring in Sir Carnivore Dutch Masters. Dutch, you've been shorting this uh, recent couple of rallies that we've had at the S and P, the Nasdaq, and you do this through a couple of different ETFs. Do you do you really intend to turn bullish at any point here? And what would be your signal? Yeah, so we do. We ha we're building a list of stocks that we want to buy, and we think there's probably another 10 or 15 percent to go on the downside. And what we're looking for is we want to see the dollar stop going up. We want to see the Fed slow down either the amount that they're raising or the frequency. Either one would be fine with us. Um, we want to see a technical breakout of the indexes uh, out of what I call this downward sloping channel of death. And uh, we'd like to see more stocks show up on our buy uh, screens. Those four things, if we're looking for those, we start to see those get ticked off, we would become more bullish. Now, I want to address something you guys are talking about here, which is the a lot of statisticians and technical guys talk about, you know, X amount from the high blah 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 you got to understand I've got a theory that the highs that we had were phony to begin with and all we've done is taken that mountain chart if you look at a three-year chart of the S&P or whatever or the Nasdaq there's this bizarre mountain that was blown up and now we've just eliminated the mountain okay so if we're going into a recession then there's no way that we could, you know, say that 20% more to the downside is unfeasible. The hell yeah, it's feasible. I mean, we all we are is back to the trend line, and 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 before we were in much better economic shape than we are today. Okay, and you you have a couple of long positions in there, but go ahead, Jeff. I want to hear your response to that. Yeah, I don't disagree. I mean, if you look back and and uh, as I think Neil said earlier that. Um, uh, history tends to rhyme. And, and when you look at the last two or three times that we've had these outsized um, turns to the downside, generally we hit that bear market down about 20%. And, you know, the smart money says, well, I'm not going to sell uh, at the low and, uh, and miss a recovery. And then, you know, something can happen, which accelerates it down 30 or 40 and you're handcuffed and you go for the ride. I mean, to me, the takeaway is that you know, when you have uh, this much economic evidence, investors need to be vigilant and to have portfolio components which are non-correlated to the capital markets that have shown during these cycles what, to zig when the market like sagging. What? Like what? Well, you know, Blue Rock's focus, our core, uh, our core flagship fund is Blue Rock Total Income Plus Real Estate Fund. I don't know if you can pull up a chart. It's TIP 
RX, you'll see one heck of a chart. It's up, uh, it's up uh, uh, 25% in the trailing 12 and about 15 and a half percent year to date. Yeah, I see it. Uh, there you go. Um, How's that? Yeah, we see it. Uh, that is a pretty chart. Yeah, go go ahead. But I'm worried about buying things at the highs here. I got to tell you something. <laughs> when the when the you know what hits the fan, everything's correlated. That's one thing I've learned. <laughs> well, well, uh, yeah, you know, t take a look when when uh, when we had the flash crash of COVID, equity sold off about thirty five or forty percent. Uh, this fund was down one and then did about 46 percent in the next uh, okay. uh, 48 months. So it was truly decorrelated. But, you know, it, it, it's just a, you take a look at the largest pen, pension funds, endowments, the Ivy Leagues, et cetera. They are right now the big three, Princeton, Yale and Harvard have about 18 percent in equities and closer to 50 percent in alternatives and waiting, decorrelated. So waiting. They've, they've outperformed. Yeah, well, um, yeah, you didn't mention my alma mater, Berkeley. <laughs> we don't have as big an endowment fund. <laughs> We've been actually doing pretty well. Uh, a quick comment at the end here, Dutch. What are you looking for as we head toward the November Fed meeting? Well, we all know how traders act. They're very short-sighted. So as we head towards the Fed meeting, we're going to see more and more talk about, oh, my God, are they going to raise it a full point? And uh, this market's going to sell off right into the Fed. All right, gentlemen, great to have you both. Thank you so much.